Good morning, it's a new day here, and today we're going to be continuing our discussion on string methods. If you're not familiar, string methods can be used to manipulate strings. By understanding how to use some of the most popular string methods, you're going to advance your Java skills and your development skills in general. And you know what else is going to help you increase your development skills in general? You bet, my sponsor, Pramp. So if you're ever in the situation where you're like, oh, I really want a job, but you know, I actually don't know how to code and I'm not really good at these interviews and... Ugh. Well then let Pramp come in and save your day because what Pramp does is it allows you to have peer-to-peer -peer interviewing sessions. So basically you get paired with another individual, you ask each other interview questions, and you improve your interviewing skills. Now this platform is generally targeted towards technical interviews, so there's going to be stuff for data structures and algorithms, but there's actually a wide variety of topics including data science, front-end development, system design, and even behavioral interviews if that's what you're struggling with. So if you want to avoid being a complete failure, definitely go check out Pramp. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. Now let's move on to string methods. We're just going to go through some examples to see some of the most common methods. We have this string here which is called full ad and it's just an advertisement for chicken pot pies. And if we were to put this ad on TV or something, it's really not going to work unless we're screaming the ad the entire time. So in order to do that, we need to put in all uppercase letters. <laughs> so to do that, you can say full ad dot to uppercase and run that. And you can see now it's in all capital letters. You know, but this method of advertisement might not work if you're doing online advertising, for example. So you might want to actually make everything lowercase. So for example, if we had some capital letters in here and we wanted to bring everything to lowercase, very similar, you just use two lowercase, just like that. The next method we're going to talk about is used to remove extra spaces in the beginning or at the end. And this might be useful if you're asking a user for something. So like, let's say we, we want to get their username or their password or something but we want to make sure they don't put extra spaces at the beginning or end. We might just want to clip off the beginning and end any white space. So to do that, we just do full add dot strip. And when we execute this, it should just be the normal string. And if you wanted to see what it would be like without the strip, you can see that white space is printed. Now, if you go in here and put a backslash T, which is a tab or a backslash N, which is a new line, and then we do the strip. Well, when we execute it, you can see that that also goes away. So white space includes spaces, tabs, and new lines. There might be a situation where you want to do this, but you only want to do at the beginning or at the end. So to do that, what we could type in is dot strip, and then you can see there's leading and trailing. So the leading is going to be at the beginning. Oh, okay, Claire, you're gonna start sending me emails too. Seriously, oh my goodness. So if we do this strip leading, you can see that it gets rid of the white space at the beginning, but there's actually some white space here at the end. And trailing works in a similar way, it's just at the end. I'm sure you guys can figure it out. The next method we're going to talk about is substring, and this can be used to get a section of the string if you don't want to use the entire thing. So for example, we can go in here and call substring, and then we pass in an index to start at. So let's just clean this up just a little bit. Let's say this is our string. And we want to start at this my oh my. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So index 9 is going to start at the my. And if we run that, we should just get the rest of the string starting at my. If you want to stop at some point, so for example, if I just want to get my oh my, then we need to pass in that the ending index. And that last index is not included. So we want to actually grab this index. So if this one's nine, we need 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So if I go in here and pass 17 in here, you can see it gets my oh my, and there's no space at the end. So the beginning one is inclusive, it includes that character. The last one is exclusive, it does not include the character at this index. Another cool method that honestly, I have no idea what it's for, but I'm gonna teach it to you guys just for fun, <laughs> is this repeat method. And basically you can put in a value here and it'll just repeat the entire string. So I could say eh, 300, you know, why not? And you can see it's going to print that string 300 times. <laughs> so yeah, why would you want to do that? I don't know, but it's cool. So for example, if we went in here and put a backslash n for a new line, now it should print them all on a new line. And there we have 300 occurrences. So that's an interesting way to make sort of like a loop in a string, if that's something you're into. I'm probably never gonna use that method again. So <laughs> moving on to the next one, which is equals. And here you pass in another string and it will return true or false depending on if the values of the string are the same. So for example, if I pass in hello here, 
Well, I can definitely tell you that hello is different than this whole string up here, so it should return false. And you can see I was right. I know, I'm pretty smart. Why would you wanna do this? Well, later on, we're going to get into conditionals. So basically you could make some kind of condition. For example, let's say we had a password and that password is let me in, which is by far the worst password ever. <laughs> you know, cause people will be like, what's the password? And they're gonna be like, let me in. <laughs> All right, that was a stupid joke. Okay, and then in here, what we could do is we could say password dot equals. And then inside of these parentheses, we could put a value that the user guessed. So if we were to get user input here, which I guess we could just do that real quick. So we get a new scanner object and we pass in system.in. And then all we have to do is say scanner.nextline right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to store this inside of a string, we'll call it guess. So now it should ask the user for the password Maybe we can give an output just so they know what to do. So we could say, guess the password. And then we can put this guess value inside of this equals method. And if the guess is equal to the value of password, then they win. Otherwise they lose. So let's just run it. Guess the password. We're going to guess, let me in. And it returns true. Let's try it again. Guess the password. Taco Bell is legit. <laughs> I don't even like Taco Bell. Pizza, we get false. So that covers some of the main string methods. Yes, there are more. If you wanna see some of the other ones, you could just put a string in here and look at all these methods. Obviously, I don't wanna go through every single one because this is not a reference. <laughs> this is designed to help you guys learn how to use these methods. So thank you guys, hopefully that was helpful and hopefully you have a good understanding of string methods. If you've enjoyed this, I just ask that you would subscribe. When you subscribe, that makes me happy. So if you want me to be sad the rest of my life, don't subscribe. Also, be sure to check the links in the description for a link to the Java Crash Course, the notes, as well as our incredible sponsor. Thank you guys, I'll see you in the next one.